screen. Yeah, you go do some meme. More space for me in the still of all you please. I'ma blow the scene. No diamonds on my teeth. Got the pearlies up on me. Join us here. Join us here. Hello, friendly listener. You are now tuned in to the Rambling Rogue Show. I am your host, Gyres Rogue, aka Gyres in the Jungle, huh? Or uh, you know, um, anything you want to call me. And yeah, we are in, as you can see, a brand new room. So you know what? Off the rip, that deserves some applause, like usual. There you go, listener. We in a new room to celebrate, as you guys could obviously tell by the title, the 30 subscriber mark that we just hit. So salute to you, listener. Thanks to you. You know what I'm saying? A combined amount of 30 of you. Hey, this podcast is now able to be heard by way more people because guess what each one of you subscribers represents? You guys represent, you know, people that are able to to, to, to help bring this podcast into relevancy, okay? So today we're at 30, but tomorrow or in the future, when we, when we expand, you are the first 30. You are the people that were on the ground floor. So again, hats off to you, listener. Couldn't have done it without you. But yes, you are tuned into the Rambling Rogue Show. I am your host, Rambling Rogue. And, um, you know, I'm here to ramble to you. As always, I just want to let you guys know this show is literally just a segment of talking that I am using to vent. But it's something that I would hope, I mean, you could use it for whatever you want, but it's something that I would hope that, you know, for most people out there that find this, it's it's really just something that you guys can use as kind of just filler. You know, a lot of times, um, people that are very busy-minded, you know, like myself, um, we, we, I, I tend to actually seek out conversations, interviews, podcasts, content, I anything that would just be even generally relevant to me. I, I tend to, to ha- try to have that shit on like m- during most of my idle time. And I think I do this because it kind of, not only it helps me think, but it's just like, I just get very, I guess I'm just very accustomed as, as a young person in this time to, I guess, content being, you know, just so easily fed to me. And so... Oftentimes, I'll literally just need a voice just doing something in the background, something that I could maybe even just fleeting, you know, in, in, in just the sparing parts of my like, you know, like, let's say I'm I'm playing some video games or whatever. And, um, you know, because matchmaking in most online games happens, you know, that's downtime. You know, if I just want to just like look away, I could look away at, you know, Steven Crowder going in on, you know, liberals or whatever. So. I like to have things on just so that it's never a moment where I'm just kind of just, you know, just, I guess not receiving. I mean, I guess there are moments where I isolate myself specifically, like in reading and like in meditation, which I don't do that enough. I have to start doing that shit more. But honestly, um, you know, doing things like that, at least for me, it just helps me come to a solace, you know, it helps me come to, it's like a, uh, uh, method in the madness, a, uh, uh, you know, like getting used to the chaos or something like that. I don't know. Um, it is July 24th. So it is Monday. I mean, it is Tuesday. So that means that this episode is late. I know I've been trying to get these episodes out on time. Last week, it looked like we were on like a good little good little note. But um, but as you guys can see, yeah, we're filming this in the day as well. And um, honestly... This past weekend, I had inflammation, so I'm not even feeling bad about this shit. I had inflammation on my side. My side was fucking hurting. That shit felt like a sharp pain. I literally had to just like, I had to um, call off work like the week of. So basically, I worked Monday through Friday. So I had to call off Friday, and then I went to the doctor on Friday. Doctor gives me a, uh, like a, an order to not work through to Monday. So now it's Tuesday. I'm going to back to work in a little bit. A little, a little, I'm going back to work a little bit later, and so yeah, I had to get this in. I really did not want to wait until after work for me to actually have getting this, um, you know, to get this episode done. So um, I'm here on Tuesday because I had inflammation, and not only that, 
my weekend was a little bit eventful. I do have some stories to get into, listener. Some some kind of deep ramble tangents. So buckle up. You know what I'm saying? It, it, you know, uh, as we say here on the Rambling Rogue Show. It's ramble time. So uh, basically, what do I want to talk about? I don't want to talk about that first. I want to talk about something that's been on my mind. Something that I really, really think I'm going to write about. I'm going to I'm gonna try. I don't know what I'm going to do. I want to write an article. I want to write and post it. And it's an article about an idea I've been thinking about. Rap is very awkward. I don't know about the rest of the music industry, you know, I'm, I mean, I'm sure there's overlap, you know, with, with, with a lot of what I'm about to, to go over, but what I'm noticing in the small doses that I'm getting from the actual rap industry, man, rap is the most awkward thing ever. I mean, it looks like it wouldn't be right. It's basically a celebration of all the quote-unquote coolest people or quote-unquote most substantive people. But on the ground level, you know, where you have most rappers, where you have most producers, where you have most creators, I want to say that it's, it's damn near an embarrassing feat right now being a rapper with the access of social media and then just with the internet being able to broadcast yourself and and put yourself really on any platform any and what and by that I mean any musical platform so any place where you know you you think that your music might be received you have an opportunity but with that opportunity being so open and so readily I guess available. It really does let in the uh, the 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 bottom of the barrel as well, and and man, you know, I, I okay, I'm beating around it, but I got an opportunity to actually go to an, a professional studio. Um, I'm not even gonna tell the really that. I, well, fuck it, I'm gonna tell the story. So, over life, a guy that I've actually had on this podcast. Um, Overlife Takeover, y'all go check that out. Overlife is an upcoming rapper from the IE. He's about to really, he, I mean, aside from this whole story, that dude, he's about to have a wave. You know what I'm saying? So, Overlife, y'all go check for him. Overlife movement. Anyway, um, so my dog, Overlife, somebody who I've known for many, many years, if you watch the Overlife uh, interview, you'll know that. He hits me up saying that we've actually got the opportunity to go to the studio, but he needs a ride. I've got a car, Linda. And so, you know, he's wondering if, if, you know, I want to go. So, of course, as soon as he mentions it and mentions that the studio is in North Hollywood, I get excited. I get ecstatic. In fact, you know, I start, you know, speaking loud. I start getting all these ideas. So I basically am like totally sold by the idea I start thinking about it, you know, I mean, it was after work for me, I was a little bit tired, I was thinking, I was trying to do um, one of my naps, because I don't know if, if I got into this last episode, but I'm pretty sure that I did, but um, this past week, I've also been trying to uh, implement a napping schedule, so that I'm actually up for more hours during the night, and I'm actually able to, you know, produce and create and things like that, I do believe I touched on it, because that was right, the last episode was um, on time, but um, anyway, you know, dude is literally telling me like, yeah, man, let's go. We got to go in about, you know, like an hour or so. So I'm not able to take my nap and I'm going to have to go out there. But I'm like, man, this could be an opportunity. And if nothing else, at least a learning moment for me, you know, and um, I will say that at, at least I came out of it. It definitely was a learning experience. You know, it was um, it's one of those experiences where going to this studio where I came out of it not expecting to learn what I did learn, but I had learned quite a substantive amount. And so much so that I I felt like 
this experience kind of because I've been having these feelings about rap being awkward for a while and these feelings I guess you could say uh, I guess peaked during this experience so what am I talking about first though because my camera it was not a very, very uh, slightly older camera you know it's it's actually uh, lost the ability to to show me you know what I'm doing on screen so let me just check it make sure that everything's okay I'll, I'll continue telling this story but I, I really do have to check this but anyway I'm invited out to the studio in North Hollywood and what ends up happening is is not only do I have to pick up David who's not even at his house he's like a couple minutes away from his house I have to then pick up his friend who lives very close to North Hollywood he lives um I don't want to really blast that but I had to go pick up his friend that lives in the LA area and after that the friend tells me yeah no we're going to uh, Ventura and if you're familiar with the layout of LA LA County you'll know that Ventura eh, it's a little uh it's a lot past North Hollywood you know it's actually a whole other city way on the other side so um not on the other side but it's just way further down past so I'm like all right we get the directions and uh we end up heading to the studio and what I witnessed at about 12 a.m 12 to 1 a.m that night was a series of different people within the rap industry that are you know up and coming trying to make it trying to get somewhere and i saw these guys literally out here i mean i don't even know how old they were i mean these were these were probably guys in their mid 20s mid to late 20s who you know they they dressed and looked the part they looked you know, quite like the rappers that you see on Instagram and the rappers that you see basically on every festival, just lit. But, um, you know, one of them had some Bape on, some Supreme, you know what I'm saying? You know, they had like, uh, what kind of shoes do they have? I don't even remember what the shoes are. But what I, what I remember was is that these guys just looked like, I mean, not to be disrespectful, but like, they were a little bit overextending themselves, you know? And, um, you know, I mean, it's a possibility that some of these guys actually see this because they did end up following me on my account, on my Jires in the Jungle account. I was networking quite a bit in there, but, you know, on Jires in the Jungle, Rambling Rogue Show, we just we just speak straight venting, you know? We just, that's what we do here. But, um, you know, so I'm just telling it from my perspective. And while these guys looked the, slightly the part, I just want to continue. They they looked, yeah, like they were overextending themselves and like maybe they were just a little bit out of their depth. Like at this point in your life, I would assume that it should be more developed than this. And honestly, just more structured, just more, I don't know. They seem just more like guys that, uh, you know, they, they were party goers. So then maybe they threw parties and things like that. They were going from state to state, but it just seemed very loose, you know, because I mean, these guys pop in and we were waiting for them too, because we were waiting outside of this. So let me tell the story. We pull up to the studio and we have to wait about 45 minutes for more people to basically arrive and then for us to base not 45 minutes i'm really it's like more like 20 to 30 minutes and we wait for more people to arrive and i guess we're waiting for another studio session to end within the studio so we're waiting and we're waiting and it's kind of cold or whatever and people are arriving and we're literally not even able to just sit inside of like a waiting room i mean there is no space for a waiting room at the studio yet Still, it just was a very, uh, I don't know, just a very, that alone was a very uncomfortable, not very, but it was an uncomfortable setting. And so I tried to like kind of mitigate or, 
or try to do what I could just to kind of like, you know, just shake up or and just do something. I start because I had my camera. I start, I start taking out my camera and then I'm like, yo, you know, just complimenting the guys. I start taking pictures of guys and stuff like that because they were dripped out. They they did have a look, but at the same time, I also wanted to just capture them just because. And I, I could tell that if I were to look, because I haven't looked at the pictures that I took of that night, but it was a few nights ago. But um, I could just tell that that same feeling would come through on those photos. But, uh, you know, that's the thing about passion. You know, your external can really fool you. The way you look may not be what that energy inside, you know, is and so that scares me you know because it's like you know when you look at the mirror that can judge and 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 deter what your internal feels or or how your internal is and it's just this weird cycle of i just hope that there were no people there i mean it's totally possible and i don't really know those guys so it's like whatever but i just hope that there's nobody there that's just there wasting talent that because if these are grown men who were first of all wait, you know ready and able to just just wait outside which which that's fine i mean that's you know sometimes you gotta wait but when we got into the studio because i don't know exactly who booked it but i i'm sure that there were multiple groups of people and in that there were people there that were just there Okay, they were just they were just there. You know, I mean, some people brought food and water and and then I guess, you know, weed and other things like that, but they were just there and the rappers that had came, they just kept coming. There were just more and more rappers coming. And while they were very much dripped out whatever, I mean, a lot of them just to me just looked like even though they looked cool now it just i could tell that in 10 years this is just gonna look like your your style is gonna just look like it was a style of right now not to say that it looks bad but it's just like it's captured in right now you're really capturing right now is what i'm saying and you know more rappers came in looking like that so at the end of it it was about because we finally get led into the studio so it's about like at least eight to like 10 rappers just walking around in the room. And it was a very weird thing to me because I don't know if everybody booked at the time. I don't know why you would book a giant group studio session unless you were all in one group. Some of the rappers started to vibe with each other and they started to fuck with each other. I think I do believe they knew each other prior and they maybe were working together. I mean, they are generally on the same level. These guys, these are guys that are like on the L.A. scene and shit. So like on the just cutting edge of it or just cutting floor. But man, I, I just did not imagine that to be how the studio, the stew is. That was very awkward. It was very awkward because... It would be a beat maker just making a beat and, and it would be a fire beat, but then it would be four or five dudes just freestyling and just getting hype and not making music. Okay, it was just they were just and they would just say ridiculous shit. Like, yeah, I mean my standards in that moment, I mean the beats that they had were like very trap and and the way they looked, my standards weren't of some lyrical miracle shit, but at the same time it was just it, it was just silly. Like like you're really just trying to hit the formula so that you can make the the most I mean I think the word formula really captures what I'm talking about here like you can, so that you can just make the most just science just man-made malt music you know and I guess there has to be somebody doing that but geez, to actually see the guys doing it and no knock to them. I mean, again, you know, you get success however you want to. But I, I just don't ever I just I I I I physically cringe 
And and you know I don't want to I, I really don't want to bash these guys because it's really not them it's it, but because I know it's rap in general it's it's this is happening all over the place and there's more examples to how rap is awkward but I just want to say this you know you had grown men really going in there and 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 just trying to perpetuate this life that it's it's so lit like it's so fu- like all of this and none of it was fun there were no girls. Okay, and they were and they were videotaping themselves inside the studio with beats being made, and the beats were fire, but everything that was said was just again it was just like it wasn't even like again and and, and not even lyrical miracle but not even original like like it wasn't there I did not hear an original sounding flow somebody trying to do something experiment like nothing like and it's just to me. It's just like, what is even the point? Like, I, I mean, for me, for me, art is about bringing things that are not into, not in this world, not from existence into existence. And all I heard was things, or were things that exist. And I just, I just, I cringe at that. It's especially when I, I consider the idea of people paying for the time to be in a room full of people that aren't going to tell you that your shit is trash. And they're just gonna, it's just, and everybody's just, it's just this big circle jerk of like, okay, cause like, okay, you know, LA people, they're cool, but LA people are just like, like, it's just the very city, city people. Like, okay, you got LA people that are LA county people, but then you got people that just come to LA and they're like city, city people. And these motherfuckers want to just spread their Instagram and, 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 you know, I mean, and there's no problem with that shit but it's just like at some point man we gotta actually have some genuine actual connection here you know what i mean and it's like if you don't actually feel that don't just feel the need that you have to then advertise yourself and broadcast yourself and 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 you know cover all bases you know just just link with people that you actually fuck with like that shit it was just what else do i have here about here about that shit I mean, it, it was it was ridiculous. The room also, oh yeah. So, yeah, and, and again, uh, let me go back to the perpetuating part where, you know, it's these guys in a room, grown men, and they're trying to look like they're having a good time, yet when you're actually in the room, I mean, it was a cramped room, not enough chairs, and you could tell everybody was high, or drunk. So everybody was smiling. Everybody was kicking it or whatever. But what I also felt, right, was that it, it's exactly that same type of mood, that same type of energy that could, like, quickly flip into that negative shit. You know what I mean? I mean, just too many just live wires, too many, you know, it was, just, it was about, it was at least 15 people in the room. And it was a studio. You know, and nobody had gone into the booth. And you know what they had ended up saying by the end of the night? Well, let me not get to that. The perpetuating part. 15 dudes in a studio, and these motherfuckers are literally just trying to rap or trying to make a beat. There's a couple dudes, and the dudes that were making beats in there, fire beats, straight fire beats. And, you know, again, the rappers that were in there, they could do the flows that they that they were trying to do. It's not like they sounded bad, but I was just like, none of none of it sounded like anything new. And they even hired a guy, an 18-year-old kid in the room. He might be listening to this, so shout out to my homie Anthony. You know what I'm saying? Homie, I mean, shit. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta, he saved up some cash, got himself a small little setup with his camera, and now he's out filming rappers for pay. And um, I salute that because it's that guy who, who who just took the small initiative and stopped saying, I want to, I want to, I want to, and just started doing it. That sees any success. but And I totally believe that. But this guy's filming these dudes literally just standing around rapping and jumping around just, just making a fool. And just so they could post it on Instagram and be like, yeah, we was in the stoop. We getting work done. Da, 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 da. But really, I would ascertain all y'all did today was just spend money and spend time 
Both things that you won't be able to get back. Maybe, yes, money you'll be able to get more of, but the same money that you spent, you won't be able to get back. And to me, it didn't look worth it on their part because it looked also like something that they had done before. Like, this is some regular shit. Because when 15 niggas came into the studio, the people I was with, because they didn't expect this, you know, the people that in the so my homie over life, he invited me to the stew. He did not expect this. This dude, I mean, he was physically like, like not with it at all. And so essentially I'm, I'm, I'm just looking at him like, okay, well, you're, you're going to have that mood. I have a different mood because I'm very explorative. I just want to know what's going on here. And in that regard, it was very, it was a fun experience just because it was so informative, but Essentially, what I'm saying here is, is these guys are trying to perpetuate that. And to what end, I have no idea. And to that, I say, I'm not better than any anybody. But I will say, I am very much glad that, that the thing I'm trying to do with my music, my art, my whatever, it's just shit that, like, not to say it's the most original or creative or new, because it always has influence but I'm trying to take it and push it to my own level, my own unique level, at least that, you know what I mean? And I just, I did not get that from, from that room. And it was crazy to me that people would be have, would have been paying for that time. Oh, and at, at the end of it all, they let me know that because we were there for about three to four hours. So at the end of it all, I mean, we weren't there for three to four hours. They must've been there to like the morning. But at the end of it all, we end up figuring out that it took about three hours for them to even just get the mic hooked up. So nobody was even able to rap. The mic was messing up, I guess, and, and they had barely just gotten it right when we were fixing to leave around 3 a.m. And to me, that is, that's asinine, okay? I mean, maybe these guys are very nocturnal beings, so the day is just like the night and they could just be up and just doing shit all night. I don't know. But I mean, for me, that just, if I was a rapper and my whole sole objective was to just go to the studio and record and just get some shit done, which is why I created a studio here. I would never want to, to just be relying on somebody. That's ridiculous. But if, if that was my whole objective and I could not do the one thing, I would be livid. But that's just me. Just me. Maybe I'm crazy. No, I know I'm crazy. Rap is awkward. I want to write about it. Thank you for tuning in to episode 28 of the Rambling Rogue Show. 30 subscriber special. New room. You know what I'm saying? If I could just show you guys quickly a little bit of the new room. We have the pretty much the same setup as last time. Um, we've got our screens. You know what I'm saying? But what we also have in a very close proximity now is our record player. Salute to the needle drop. So what we've already been doing too is just experimenting experiment, experimenting more with uh, just sampling and things like that. So Degati was over here yesterday. Salute to Degati. He actually produced the hit song Love by Jairus Rogue. You guys can actually go check that out on YouTube now. But um, he produced that song and um, he's so great, man. He was in here and we were literally just going through samples and he was just, I mean... He was just cutting them, and it—I mean, it would just be one song, one little thing, and then and then and then he's got it. So salute to the Gotti. You know what I'm saying? Salute. All my dudes gonna be coming up soon. My plans—I I know this isn't future plans. That was last week's episode, but I, my plans for the future, though, for for the Gotti and for really all these beat makers, all these people that are around me in the IE and 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 the surrounding area listeners, that I would really hope, you know, that um. And I, I, I want to speak it now just so that it I just have it somewhere because I'm not going to say this too many times after this. But I'm trying to get on my Russell Simmons shit, listener. And I, what I've got cooking up is this idea. It's something that I'm ready to put in time. I'm ready to just shell out the years. You know what I mean? Like, I want money. That is the objective. But I'm But for this, this is something where I'm ready and willing because this is the tree I want to plant and from this tree I want the branches to grow from this 
in everything I do in life professionally. This is this is the tree I want to plant, and I'm ready to plant it. And I do believe that it will help me actualize my um at least my vision, quote unquote, as they say. <laughs> so um, stay tuned. Oh, and double stay tuned. Dreadlock Journey is returning, listener. You know it. Dreadlock Journey will be returning. Now that the Linda EP is out, I am still working on some other music. So that's got my attention right now, listener. I'm not going to lie. But with the Linda EP being out, we will be filming an episode of Dreadlock Journey for the Playboy Cardi show that we're going to be attending this Friday, July 27th, over at the uh, observatory. And then also... We're going to be actually filming our entire London trip because yes, listener, I'm going to fucking, I'm, 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 I'm going to, I'm going to go international listener. I'm, I'm going to the UK and, and, um, yeah, so we're going to be having a great time out there in London and I will be, be sure to document it for you guys because I'm going to be exploring. I'm going to be on the ground floor. I'm going to, I'm just going to be looking around. I don't know what I'm going to do, but I'm going to just, I'm going to have fun. Maybe I'll try some spliff, you know, who knows? But um, we're going to have a fucking great time. What else do we got? So we went through inflammation. Oh, yeah. To piggyback on, um, I think, last week's sentiment. Dates should be a normal thing. I want to salute right now um, a friend of mine, Maddie, who hopefully soon... One day you guys will know her as something else, but um, I want to salute her right now because she's actually shown me what it looks like when a person can just be mature, when a person just, you know, in this day and age especially, can just see that you're of the intentions that you laid out to them. You know, right now we're living in a time where technology especially makes it like this. You know, it's so easy to just be anonymous. It's so easy to just be something, you know, in real life and then something else online or something else somewhere else, you know, because of all the access that people have nowadays. So for women, especially what I'm noticing is that there is a huge distrust that's just growing, especially for just like just common, just, you know, just like just like in women in general, you know, there's a there's a large distrust in men growing. And um, it's gotten to the point where. The idea, I believe, I believe the idea of a date is, is, has been lost. Okay, listener, um, I would really, really love if you could get to this point into the podcast, if you guys could chime in, in the comments about this topic, I really would love, um, some outside perspective on this one because my thing is this, I'm a little bit pissed off that a date is now something that a relationship, you know, is a prereq or, or, I'm a little bit pissed off that a date, right, is something that I got to be in a relationship for, right? Right now, that's the standard, and that's what it's feeling like. And I think that's, it's just bull, you know? Building up a relationship through social media, through FaceTiming, and, you know, just through all these different things, you know, that's cool, that's fine. But, you know, I think there has to be something said there has to be something appreciated about just being able to go out with someone, seeing if you like them on that occasion, and it being just that. Not every guy is looking to have immediate sex immediately. Now, how can you tell what guy's trying to do what? And even women, I mean, how can you tell what, what the intentions of a woman are? And you know, that's that's the gray area we find ourselves in. And I know that's where the fear comes from. I do. But I'm, I'm just here to say that it's it's misplaced. Because what it's done now is it's made it so that the most common, just conventional thing of just going out so that you could have a conversation with somebody is something that I'm sure it just it just drives anxiety to to women. And, and you know what? I get it. I understand, you know, it's like, men, you know, there's so many cases now that you're finding, and not only that, there's so many women now that are just finding their voice in speaking up about these cases, and not just these cases, but just in everyday, you know, just iterances, just, they're, they're just 
women are just becoming more awoken to the idea that, right, that they are more than whatever they have been placed here and have been told by by society. And that's fine. But socially, I think we're dying when we say that, or at least we're in we're in trouble when we say that, you know, something like going to Starbucks for a coffee is is serious. Like, oh my God, are you serious? Are you like, are you joking me? It's it's like it's a not. It, it used to be a non-issue. You invite a girl out to something, and if she would say no, right? Maybe you ask her again. But but the time that you do ask her, if you guys go out. If she doesn't like you, then it's over. I mean, that's that's just what it is. That's just what it is. And you know what? You if you when you go on that date, you notice too. Hey, like we're just not compatible. But and I just wish that idea would just come back. Now I don't know how. I mean, there's so much nuance to this. I'm sure. So I would love to to know your perspective on this, listener. But it's just it, you know, it scares me because it's like I'm an internet guy. I'm an internet guy. I, I love the internet. I really, really do. In fact, I, there was a point in my life where I really wanted to start a religion about the internet. I thought that the internet was God. You know, like, yes, it's it's a man-made thing, but it, to me, it's just, its capability is limitless. And it just, it's bringing, it's brought and is bringing things together that, I mean, we're just worlds apart before. But I'm sure that it has an effect and it, and it, and it, and it is, I'm sure that looking at the internet will help find why this is happening. You know, because there just has to be something said about the capability for connection going through the roof and then the quality of connection with people, you know, going lower, right? Like, you have so much, but now because everything is so vast, it's very hard to just have a very intimate moment. And I like to say that I quote unquote struggle with intimacy. I do believe a lot of people of my generation and, and a lot of other internet type of people do as well. And and to you guys, I say, I, guys, we gotta, we gotta jump out and get into our comfort zones a little bit because it's getting a little ridiculous. It is like, I don't know something that that I've been thinking about and something that I just did not want to put on like Twitter or whatever I mean I'm sure I could probably field some responses from there but you know if anybody would, would answer but you know I, I feel like this is a very nuanced topic this is a topic that I definitely want to touch back on with some some more guests that I want to have on the future like including Jessica and Maddie and um, you know some others Jessica being the girl that that I mentioned last week's episode, guys, um, you know, the girl that came over with that whole thing, you know, about the book. But um, essentially, yeah, those are my thoughts on that, because, yeah, it, it's, it's scary. It's scary. Oh, yeah. Linda EP will be coming to YouTube. Listener, I'm working on that. I'm working on that. Um, I'm, I mean, I'm not going to work too hard. It's not much that I have to do, but I will get that done for you guys. And it, it, it will happen. I want to thank all the people that over just this past night took a listen to the Lindy EP, took a listen to the love uh, song and music video. You guys are fucking amazing. Um, I saw a bunch of people literally because of the link that was shared onto the uh, Kanye Tita KTT uh, site. Just because of that, I saw a whole bunch of people actually give me love. And um, thank you to, to 10 figure 10, 10 figgy. Or Daryl, you know what I'm saying? My cousin for sharing the link and salute to all the people that's enjoying that shit, man. I mean, if I could just say something, if you guys are listening to this, if anybody's listening to this that enjoys um, any of the Linda EP, again, just like how it says on the first song, it's it's all made about love, man. It's all about love. And um, pretty much, yeah, just keep that in mind. Well... You know, I really don't have much more to say to you, listener. Uh, oh, right. Salute to Maddie, um, friend of mine who will be on the uh, podcast soon. 
I don't think I wrapped this one up. We actually did meet yesterday on Monday and um, the first place we met, Maddie and I, was a mental hospital. And I haven't told that story, listener. I will soon. I will one day. But uh, we met while we were both knee deep in episodes and, you know, episodes within the mind. And essentially, that's where our relationship sprung and came from. And so we had a very deep conversation. It was a conversation listener that if I could describe it, it was just just very open you know, for like hours, we were, we were just talking about just many different things. And, you know, if I just bring that up to say, if if you're not able to do that with any one listener, um, it really is a therapeutic thing. And it really is a uh, it's a wonderful thing. And if you feel like maybe you're not able to open up like that to really anyone or just to most people, you know, seek out more people that, that are able to do that because it is it's quite a commodity. And more to that if you're really not able seek some you know seek seek some seek some uh some therapeutic advice you know seek some therapy you know um whenever your mind just needs to export because it really just does sometimes you know we do really receive so much information sometimes it's great to just you know export but that's what i was able to do yesterday salute to maddie she actually promised that she'll actually be um, on the podcast one day. So I'll hold her to that. And uh, yeah, salute to her. She's she's a great soul. And we had a very vulnerable conversation, one that I would I would wish anybody watching, you know, have the, the likes of because it, it really was it, it was it was a great time. But um, yeah. Yeah, episode 28 of the Rambling Rogue Show, you know what I'm saying, we gotta do more fucking, uh, more uh, goddamn, you know what I'm saying, we gotta do a little bit more of those, I swear I'm gonna get in more sound effects and stuff like that, listener, you know, I will, I will, but I, I just never know what, what, it's actually, Actually, though, it sound effects are much easier during like conversations, though, like inventing sessions. You know, it's it's something I still do have to get used to, but it's like in conversations, you know, you could like be listening to somebody say something and then like just kind of wait for the timing and then boop, just drop, it, you know, instead of a response. So it's just I don't know, but we're going to get better on it. Thank you for listening to the music. Thank you for watching this podcast. And uh Don't stress yourself out. The Rambling Rogue Show.